When we think of New Zealand, we think of an unspoiled, clean country with a bright future. We think of a sports-mad nation, a melting pot of diverse people and cultures. When we think of New Zealand, we think of a country that we're proud to call home. What we don't think of, however, is a country that is suffering from what has been labelled an epidemic. Today, New Zealand ranks amongst the highest in obesity rates, with a figure that has been steadily rising over the past decade. According to the 2016 National Health Survey, a staggering one in three adults and one in nine children are classified as being obese. As harsh as it sounds, New Zealand is suffering from an obesity epidemic. Defined as having a body mass index over 30, obesity leads to symptoms including breathlessness, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol levels. Furthermore, this excess weight is the leading cause in many severe conditions, such as type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, fertility issues, and some forms of cancer. I get it. We should be accepting of all body types. But more importantly, we want everyone in our country to live long, healthy lives. Thus, we have to recognize that New Zealand's obesity rates are of utmost concern and need to be addressed. The main cause boils down to one factor. We're eating food that's bad for us, and we're eating too much of it. When it comes down to taste and enjoyment, it's a challenge for many people to give up their favorite foods, such as a juicy burger, in favor of a cold salad. So why is it that unhealthy foods always taste so good? Thousands of years ago, Food wasn't as plentiful as it is today, so our ancestors survived by developing a penchant for calorically dense foods. Fast forward to today, we still inherit the same cave mentality, driving many of us to seek out fatty and sugary substances in excess. So what we need is a solution that allows our food to be healthier without compromising on taste. The f so what if I told you that there is a solution? a natural solution, a solution through our sense of smell. Imagine being able to isolate the flavors from the foods we love and integrate them into the foods we love not so much. Imagine a cold salad having the taste of smoky, salty, streaky bacon, or giving regular old broccoli a pleasant, savory taste. On the other end of the spectrum, what if we could account for the loss in taste we know reduce salt, sugar, and fat content of unhealthy foods. Imagine flavorless potato chips tasting like the real deal. See, most people think that the flavors we taste in food, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami, are solely determined by our taste buds. But in actuality, they're a combination of both taste and smell. As we eat, volatile chemical compounds in our mouths, known as aromas, waft from our food and enter our nasal cavity from within. The orbital frontal cortex in our brain then combines this information from our tongue and nasal receptors, creating what we know as taste. This is known as retronasal olfaction. A simple way to illustrate this is through eating with a blocked nose. I'm sure we've all been there before. You'll find that your reduced sense of smell also leads to a reduced sense of taste. Recently, research has been undertaken to improve the taste of foods through the use of added scents. Last year, a revolutionary device called the, wait for it, Gas Chromatograph of Ectometry Associated Taste, or GCO for short, was unveiled by a team led by Thierry Thomas Dan Gwynn. The device is used to identify characterizing odor compounds within different types of foods. During GCO, a complex mixture of gases and aromas are separated in a process called gas chromatography. To put into layman's terms, imagine it being a race. Waiting on the starting line, you've got a mixture of gases, just like a load of runners, all mixed up and bunched together. When the race starts, the runners soon spread out because they all have different abilities. In the same way, the gases spread out in a long tube called a capillary column because they all travel at different speeds. The outflow of these separated aromas then gets split in a T-piece at the end of this column. 90% of these aromas get sent to the mass spectrometry detector, where the odors and their concentrations can then be identified. During mass spectrometry, the atoms within these compounds are first ionized. Then, the compounds themselves are accelerated and deflected by a magnetic field. 
where the amount of deflection depends on the masses of each separated compound. Imagine a tennis ball flying past you, and you try to deflect its path by blowing onto it. Frankly, due to its mass, you're not going to make much of a difference. But let's suppose a ping pong ball is flying past instead. Because it's so light, you'll get a huge deflection. As a result, these ions are fanned out into a spectrum. A detector tallies up these ions and lets us figure out exactly what compounds were originally in the mixture. This is coupled with olfactometric detection at the sniff port where the other 10% of aromas are sent. Here, the separated odors are released and tested by trained human assessors. As they constantly sniff the outflow, they take into account the quality, intensity, and duration of each separated odor. Afterwards, they can match each aroma with its compound ID. So, once you've identified an aroma and its concentration, we can obtain these compounds through chemical synthesis or distillation from natural sources. Then, they can be inserted into a food or drink through various methods, depending on whether the aroma molecules are fat or water soluble. For instance, they can be incorporated into a spray. This could be an aqueous solution, olive oil, or vinaigrette. The result of which is that our food now releases a particular aroma without any of the unnecessary ingredients. We often associate characterizing aromas such as lemons with sourness or berries with sweetness. By only having the odor present in our food, the brain fills in the blanks, reconstructing a particular taste from past experiences. One study found that when a salt-like aroma from ham was added to a salted caramel custard, despite not containing any salt, participants perceived the custard as being salty. Furthermore, some also found that the custard with 40% reduced salt tasted the same as its traditional counterparts when aromas were added. Other experiments supported these studies. Dangwin's group found that the taste of cheese could be improved by adding buttery aromas from fat and salty aromas from sardines. Furthermore, a similar result was obtained when sweet aromas were added to fruit juice, proving that there is enormous potential in this technology. So how is this better than our current alternatives? Many of today's products will have light counterparts with reduced salts, sugars, or fats. This, however, has shown to be ineffective. Simply put, People will not purchase a product if it doesn't taste as good as it used to. Even if they do, after discovering the changes in taste, they might decide to add in their own sugar or salt, entirely defeating the purpose. Another popular method is through the use of artificial sweeteners. Whilst this does decrease caloric intake, it's only able to act as a substitute for sugar and can create negative long-term effects. Because artificial sweeteners are far more potent than sugar, the overstimulation of our sugar receptors means that regular usage would cause naturally sweet foods such as fruit to be less appealing, and even more so for unsweet vegetables, thus further reducing the appeal of healthy, nutritious foods. Not only are there health benefits to this solution, there are also an abundance of social benefits. Today, obese individuals are often stigmatized for their weight, causing many to lose willpower, disengage from society, and continue on with their habits creating a self-perpetuating cycle. The reality of the situation is that obese individuals, children in particular, are far more likely to suffer from depression as a result of the stigma. Not only is obesity linked to depression, but also suicide, which is currently at a shockingly high rate within New Zealand, with over 600 cases in the past year alone. The introduction of aromas to make our foods healthier allows these individuals to gradually treat their obesity. It's an accessible, natural solution that doesn't enforce a drastic lifestyle change. Furthermore, this change would allow New Zealand to reap vast economic benefits. In 2012, overweightness and obesity cost the economy $849 million due to healthcare costs and lost productivity, taking into account factors such as absenteeism, early death, and the retraining of replacement staff. That's up to nearly $600 per taxpayer. If we could drastically lower the costs of this epidemic through obesity prevention, these funds could be put to better use, tackling less preventable health issues and greatly benefiting the NZ economy. Furthermore, these benefits would also be seen within our local industries. Take our wine industry, for example, 
where the same technology has been integrated by a team led by Wellington chemist Rob Kaisers. Our leading wine is Savion Blanc, known for its aromatic qualities from thiols, which are volatile sulfur-containing molecules. They worked on understanding exactly how these aromas were biosynthesized so we could improve the taste of our wine. Today, wine has become one of our largest growing exports, increasing in value from $25 million to $1.57 billion from 1991 to 2016, with Savion Blanc accounting for 85.6% of last year's wine exports. Our country plays a key role in feeding the world. If companies such as Fonterra could integrate this technology into their enormous catalogue of products, this would only provide a further boost to our exports and economy. Our country is known for our dairy, and Fonterra is responsible for 25% of our exports. They deliver free nutritious milk to over 140,000 children in 70% of our primary schools. Through this Milk for Schools program, 12% more kids are now meeting the recommended dairy intake. The application of this idea could be as simple as making ordinary milk taste more like its chocolate variant, creating a greater appeal for otherwise reluctant students and further increasing these health benefits. Obesity is an issue that is rampant in New Zealand, an issue that causes devastating health effects, an issue with a huge social and economic cost. But it's also an issue that can be resolved through the use of aromas obtained from the GCO process, a solution that allows for high-value, nutritious foods for all to enjoy, a solution that will one day create healthier foods and healthier lives. And I assure you that unlike obesity, it will be worth the wait. Thank you. The wine. Yeah. Um, so that's something that's already been done. So wine has become one of our largest growing exports, and um, a team led by Wellington chemist Rob Kaisers, they worked on, because wine, an important component of wine is, are its aromas. So um, Savion Blanc is known for its aromatic qualities, and they worked on understanding exactly how um, these aromas are biosynthesized. So, um, that helped improve the taste of our wine. But that would be a natural consequence of how you made the wine, right? Um, yeah. You're talking about adding a completely unnatural thing to a food to make people like it more. It's not necessarily unnatural, because the aromas that you extract are already <laughs> present in like the everyday foods. So it's not something that's exactly unnatural. So we're not talking about additives. Well, you are adding it, but you're taking it you're taking a smell from something that already exists. But it must have some kind of chemical makeup. Yeah, it does. Um, for, for instance, um, vanillin, which is the aroma from vanilla, um, less than 1% of it is actually made from natural vanillin. Instead, um, most of it's actually chemically made. But they found that. You mean vanillin, unless you use natural vanilla? Yeah. There's right. no like um, chemical side groups or you know, molecular boogeymen to try and attack you. So just, it's exactly the same, chemically speaking. Just, just a, a, a query. I was in Rotorua l this week. Yeah. Not everything I ate tasted like bad eggs. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't that undermine your argument? No, it doesn't, because <laughs> the odours that you smell are in the air, um, but uh, the odours that I'm talking about are within the food itself. So when you eat, they evaporate with, from within the food, and they enter your nasal cavity from within. So they edit out the bad egg? Well, not necessarily, but like the bad egg smell didn't exactly integrate into the food right. that you were eating. If, if your argument about artificial sugar or artificial sweetener is that it reduces people's inclination for healthy food, why does your spray <coughs> not similarly reduce people's inclination? Um, well, my point about artificial sweeteners is because they're way more potent than sugar. So if you keep on eating artificial sweeteners, it could, um, in theory, overstimulate your sugar receptors so that naturally sweet foods don't taste as good. But that but won't this, matter because I'll just spray on the stuff that makes them taste even better. Well, um, so are you saying that 
if you add an odor, you'll also get over, over stimulated and then healthy foods will taste bad as well. I, what, you, no, I'm saying that if artificial sweeteners change my demand for what I get from healthy food, then I'll just use your spray to make yep. me want the healthy food. Yeah, you can do that, so, yeah. yeah. No problem. No problems. You don't see a problem, this is a footnote, you don't, and I don't even know how to ask this question. You don't see a problem in saying to people, yeah, you're eating really lousy food. Don't stop. We'll make it okay. Um, well, because that's, that's not a problem in that, because <laughs> a large barrier for people is, you know, having a big lifestyle change. No one wants to give up their favourite no. foods. So you're saying, like. don't, don't give up anything. Yeah. We'll, we'll give you a healthy body and the ability to stuff your face with all sorts of scrummy tasting stuff. No. Forever. No. Just testing. Thank you. 